Once the king of low-budget independent films, Ben Affleck continues his climb to mega-stardom with the lead role in the $140 million epic, Pearl Harbor. I wanted to do a movie with a little bit more resonance than, than something that was just a purely fictional story. And uh, I thought that, that I've always been interested in history myself. And uh, although the Pacific Campaign and the Second World War was not something I knew a whole lot about, so I was interested in that. Pearl Harbor is a tale of two childhood friends who grew up to be American fighter pilots. And somewhere along the way, they fall in love with the same woman. This tale of love takes place against the backdrop of the historic attack on Pearl Harbor. Kate Beckinsale plays the U.S. Navy nurse, who is the object of the two men's desires. Josh fans, Ben fans, they probably, probably want to know which of the two is the better kisser. Both get a 10. They were actually, you know, as an actor, you just hope that you don't get any horrible surprises, like, you know, bad breath or false teeth or biting or, you know, something. And they were both lovely, very gentle. But the movie is also about the events surrounding the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. And while the same special effects team that brought us the Star Wars movies and Jurassic Park offers up a stunning recreation of that fateful December day in 1941, the film's stars want moviegoers to remember what they say is the film's central message. It would be good for a younger generation of Americans to see the, the sacrifice and the uh, enormous effort and the, and, the, and the real terror of war, how awful and terrible it was, and, and, and what a debt of gratitude we owe to those uh, great Americans who fought it. I think they're the real stars of this premiere and this production, and I can't wait to, 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 to meet them and uh, just hold their, hold their hands and, and, and then thank them. As, uh, as, is, as is necessary when, uh, when, you, when you meet someone of, of, of that caliber of hero. Michael Bay is no stranger to motion picture success and no stranger to Hawaii, and he hopes combining the two will add up to big bucks in the box office with Pearl Harbor, the movie. There are a lot of people that have seen the movie and said, I didn't realize that really happened. And because uh, we all learn about uh, Pearl Harbor in like one afternoon of class. And uh, it's just so, it's, it, 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 it shows you, it demonstrates what that generation was all about, how innocent they were, um, and how our country was able to step forward and rise from the ashes. And Bay says he won't hesitate to bring future projects to the islands. It was awesome working here, and I, I honestly think the crew, the Hawaiian crew, um, they really felt they wanted to do this movie justice. Despite directing his first motion picture here in the islands, Bay did reveal an awareness of the local film industry's beleaguered past. Hawaii's film industry earned a shady reputation following the torching of two movie trucks back in 1991. Former Teamster Joe Tavares is serving a 15-year sentence for that crime. You know, we heard there were Teamster problems. They were great, you know. Uh, Honestly, I would, I would shoot here in a second. And after spending a few action-packed weeks filming in Hawaii one year ago, the stars of Pearl Harbor had this to say about working in our island paradise. It was just wonderful. I mean, obviously, because I, I am from England, you know, it's not such a, a, a popular breath, holiday venue, you know, as you know, as it is in perhaps for America, just love. because it's such an awfully long trip. So but we, we turned up, and I have a, I have a child with me. My, my daughter is, was one and a bit at the time. And it was one of, it's one of the best places I've ever been with her. It's just beautiful here, and the people were extraordinarily friendly and extremely accommodating, and uh, we really owe them an enormous debt of gratitude to the state of Hawaii, who really helped us with that, and without whom we could have made this movie. What was the one big reason why you did this movie? Well, there are a couple of reasons. One is I thought it was going to be, I thought it could be a very powerful and, and affecting movie, and I thought that I wanted to do a movie with a little bit more resonance than, than something that was just a purely fictional story. And uh, I thought that, that I've always been interested in history myself, and uh, although the Pacific Campaign and the Second World War was not something I knew a whole lot about, so I was interested in that. I also thought that it would be good for a younger generation of Americans to see the, the sacrifice and the uh, enormous effort and the, and, the, and the real terror of war, how awful and terrible it was, and, and, and what a debt of gratitude we owe to those uh, great Americans who fought it. Yeah, it's action-packed. For you personally, how physical, physically draining was this movie? Uh, you know, more than most. Um, you know, it was, you know, you come home with 
bruises and stuff, but you always had to remember that uh, you know I was just pretending to be shot at, and when it really happened, the guys were dodging real bullets. I don't think they were worried about the scrapes on their knees. So. Uh, uh, we did okay. It was just a lot. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of you know. It was, it was just a, it was a pretty good workout every day. Actually, having said that though, when you're on Fort Island and shooting the shots and they got the explosions going off, was there a time when you got a chance to sit down and take a look at Pearl Harbor? And did it ever dawn on you, like you've just described, that dang, this place got hammered? Yeah, there was a couple of there's there's some there's a place on Fort Island actually where they still there are still you can see where the bullet hits in the cement, for example, and uh, and then of course we we, we attended a, a prayer a wine prayer ceremony that accompanied a wreath laying at the Arizona Memorial uh, before we began shooting. And that was that was pretty affecting because the boat is still there and still leaking oil and it's the tomb of 1177 men. And uh, that made me think, you know, it really, it really set the place and set the, the, the sense of uh, perspective for me. It's still very hard to imagine what it would be like to look over those hills and see 100 planes coming. I mean, I can't even imagine really what that must have been like. but. Uh, but we, but I tried. So what was it like having a project like this in Hawaii? It was great. I mean, I, <laughs> I like to do all the every movie in Hawaii. I mean, this is a, it's a well-deserved reputation for being a paradise. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. Uh, I never got to get off of Oahu because I was working so hard. But I understand Maui and Kauai are really beautiful as well, and, um, and even more so, in fact, because they're not as as developed. But it's it's just beautiful here, and the people were extraordinarily friendly and extremely accommodating and uh, we really owe them an enormous debt of gratitude to the state of Hawaii who really helped us with that and without him we could have made this movie. I read somewhere that this is one of your favorite roles you've ever had. Yeah. Talk about why. You know movies like this that they're going to make and uh, uh, on a subject that's as worthy as this and they're going to spend this kind of money on they're really like once in a lifetime so when they asked me if I wanted to be in the film you know uh, that was a great opportunity and then when they asked me to play this character in the film who was such a, a great great hero uh, in US military history it was even a bigger privilege having said that uh, you had to do the research on Doolittle you played the role. Let's talk about what that encompassed for you, what that meant to you to play this man. Well, Doolittle is somebody who the, the raid on Tokyo was really the culmination of a huge career. He had a military aviation. And uh, he really came up and was a, a great uh, record-breaking test pilot and uh, consultant to the U.S. Army Air Corps during the time of Lindbergh's flight in the 1920s, all this after World War I. <clears throat> and, throughout the 20s and 30s. And Doolittle was called in as a reservist uh, when this uh, attack uh, happened. And uh, uh, you know, this is a guy that just had so many achievements in his, in his life in military aviation. And then they asked him to try to figure out how to reverse what was this very demoralizing time for Americans. When Pearl Harbor was bombed, you can't even imagine just how unsafe people felt that we were attacked on our own soil, even though it was, you know, out in the ocean um, <clears throat> for the first time. And they came to him and said, can you come up with something? And when he said they were going to launch bombers off the deck of an aircraft carrier and go bomb Tokyo, people thought, okay, great. You know, let's see if you can really pull that off. And they did. You had just mentioned how the task of trying to do something like that, I did get to see the movie. So we got to see that whole, un, a whole uh, plan unfold. Having said that, knowing what you know about the raid on Tokyo, how, what kind of parallels would you draw between that and Michael Bay trying to put this movie together? <laughs> That's a very good question. That's a very good question. Um, <clears throat> I think that when you do a movie like this, there's a, you know, there's a, this costs a lot of money, you know, and, and, and these companies that make these films today, they're, they're just loath to want to spend that kind of money and, and not do it properly. And uh, I guess Bay really is like Doolittle in that sense, that if you're going to give anybody the resources to make this film, you want it to be the right guy. And Bay is the right guy. I mean, he's probably one of the greatest action filmmakers. He's one of the two or three greatest ones now in, in this business. I mean, you know, Cameron and John Woo and people like that. Bay is really one, one of the t top people now. And he's been working his way up toward that with each film he makes. And now, but the other great thing about him is he's a great storyteller. When I worked with Bay, it wasn't about explosions and bombs. It was about um, understanding who the people were and what they wanted at that particular time in the story. And uh, 
I, I say this to you genuinely. He was one of the best directors I've ever worked with in my life. I really, really like him a lot. Great guy. You had a chance to work in flight simulators. Uh, was, what kind of adventure was that, and how well did you do? <clears throat> I did great flying the plane. I would take off pretty well. I would fly the plane. I was excellent in helicopter flying and uh, shooting my targets. Bombing, I was great. Bombing, guns, artillery, all that stuff, I was great. But I think uh, every time I crashed the helicopter on the landing, so. Landing is an important skill to develop when you're going to begin the, in the helicopter corps. When I went to Dothan, Alabama, to the air wing there, and they put me in the simulator, everything was great right up until when I crashed the helicopter, and I crashed it every time. Got him good. Yeah. Getting the wrap, thank you for your time. Yeah. What was it about this role that made you decide, I gotta be in this movie? It was just when I read the script, I mean, it's just so unusual these days to read a, an epic of this scale, you know, which is uh, about such an extraordinary event and has these wonderful characters with their own personal journeys in it. And this character was, you know, it's, it's not that often you get to play a woman who has this amazing love story that's complicated and difficult and also has to kind of rise to the occasion, you know, as a nurse also. I mean, it, it was just a real dream part for me. Uh, Josh fans, Ben fans, they probably, probably want to know which of the two is the better kisser. I've been asked this a few times and I actually forgot to find out what do they say about me because that could affect my vote. <laughs> Nothing but stellar remarks. Okay, both get a 10. They were actually, you know, as an actor you just hope that you don't get any horrible surprises like, you know, bad breath or false teeth or biting or, you know, something and they were both lovely, very gentle. <laughs> and gentlemen. Yes, gentlemen. Now in the trailer, and I did get a chance to see the movie, there's a scene where the attack happens and then the nurses come into play and it's really intense. And as you were filming these scenes, you know, at some point because of this, the, the, where you are and you look around at Pearl Harbor here, what were some of the, the images that came across your mind as you were actually doing the movie? Well, obviously we all had done a lot of research for the movie, so we were very familiar with, you know, a lot of the things that had gone on. And, and, and filming the movie, you know, we were here for the first five weeks, which I think was very important because you just, it didn't kind of so much as strike you you know, now and again, you were just constantly aware that here you were filming this true story right in the place where it happened. Everybody that you came into contact with from here, you know, had some personal story to tell you about someone in their family um, who was affected. So it was a wonderful way to start the movie. I think it, it, you know, obviously we all wanted to be as responsible as we possibly could and you just couldn't forget. Here we are. You're an island girl yourself, so to speak. Uh, what was it like having this project here in Hawaii? It was just wonderful. I mean, obviously, because I, I am from England, you know, it's not such a, a, a popular holiday uh, venue for us as it is perhaps for Americans, just because it's such an awfully long trip. So but we, we turned up, and I have a, I have a child with me. My, my daughter is, was one and a bit at the time. And it was one, it's one of the best places I've ever been with her. I mean, that's, you know, obviously my first concern is, you know, are there good beaches and nice people for her to play with? And, you know, that was just fabulous. How are the people here? We're treating you okay? You right? Oh, just wonderful. I mean, I couldn't have a, a more nice time than we've been having, you know, from people in the zoo, you know, where we take the baby to people that were on the set. It's been great. Let's talk about the Dory Miller you know and the Dory Miller you tried to bring to life. I just, uh, I wanted to capture an es essence of this man's spirit, of his heart. I wanted to show that, that uh, you know, his act was truly and completely selfless. He uh, felt, you know, a desire to protect his fellow uh, military men. And for that fact, he, he gained the uh, Naval Cross. And to me, that was very important to get across in his, his, his makeup, his personality. Um, I haven't, even though I haven't seen the movie, I've seen some of the trailers and heard some of the reactions of people who've seen it, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a smile on my face, but uh, I'm really excited. During the actual attack, your character and yourself, you know, figuratively and literally ascend to the top, if you will. Oh, you know, the day we shot that stuff, it was the first time I had been on a set that, that um, chaotic. I, I'd done some uh, squib hits before and, and been around explosions, but never in an array like that. I mean, we had a thousand stuntmen and we had uh, big gas bombs and and we had, uh, you know, pe wounded people around us and blood and guts. And I mean, it was really visually something that I can't 
quite explain to you. Then they trained us on uh, uh, how to use the different weapons that are going to be fired that day. And when they put me on that gun and feel the percussion blast, it, I mean, what I'm trying to say is physically, I had all the preparation I needed. Mentally, I, I, uh, I knew the role that I had undertook. I knew what my character was trying to do. And I emotionally um, was just overcome. When I, when I put my uniform on that day and walked on the top of the deck and I saw you know, all the other people in the vintage clothing, I just started to cry. You know, I, 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 and I was like, wait a minute, I got to get myself together here because this guy's a badass. And here I am like, oh! You know? <laughs> so, so then they put me on the gun and they said, roll camera. Great, just my car's here, so I got to be quick. <laughs> I, I put put the uniform on and uh, you know I put the earplugs in and then they did the makeup and they set all the mortars and they, the planes were coming in and it just I was overcome with emotion. I mean I don't know what else to say. I just know that it was one of those times as an actor I I had to fight back from getting in the character. You know what I mean? Because it was uh, it was fun. It was fun stuff. How about packing the big gun though? Well you know brother does that every day. No. I no, I'm bush. I'm just bush. Uh, yeah, that, that was scary. That stuff was scary. That was uh, it's insane to think how you know these men <laughs> they jump on these things. And it was it was awesome. It's an experience I'll never forget. Now we've seen a lot of the men here come and gravitate to you, and they're gonna be watching this film. What is the one thing you want? Not only the people military, not only the veterans, but everybody to take away from your role and your performance in this film. Hey man, there's some women gravitating too now. <laughs> um, you know, just like you said at the beginning of this interview, that a lot of people here in Oahu know uh, of uh, Dory Miller and what type of man he is. The world knows of him. That would be my goal. Um, you know, I just hope people come and don't get scared off if they don't enjoy war movies or men don't get scared off because they think it's a romance or kids don't get scared off because they think it's a history lesson. I think it's a little bit of all of that and that together it makes one hell of an experience.